unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Can you raise your hands and worship God? The presence of God is here. What are you believing God for today? Somebody said today is the best day of my life. I believe to see God tonight in the name of Jesus. Somebody raise your hands and worship God. Be expectant tonight. What you expect you will see. And the more you see you'll expect.
Tell God what you believe in for today. Tell him what you believe in him for today. I'm believing for great things tonight in the name of Jesus. things are happening in my life. Even you, you can claim it. Praise God. Wonderful things are happening in my life. Say it to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory. We You don't know? Do you want to know? <laughs> you will know very soon. Praise God. Praise God. First Chronicles 22 verses 7. 6 actually. Let's begin from verse 6. No, let's begin from verse 5. Because I realized a few crazy things there for some people. 
my God. Now the Bible says, David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender, and the house that is to be builded for the house must be exceeding magnificial, and of, of fame and of glory throughout all the countries, not the whole country. Are you hearing me? Of fame and of glory throughout all the countries. Throughout all the countries. Do you see how God builds? Do you see how God builds? He intends to build something out of your spirit that is exceedingly magnificent. And the Bible says, and its fame and glory will spread throughout all the hearts. All the world, all the countries of the world. Somebody say, that's mine. <laughs> say it again. He says, I'll therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. Then he called for Solomon his son and charged him to build a house for the Lord, of God, the Lord God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thou hast shed blood abundantly and hast made great wars. Thou shalt not build an house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. It doesn't mean that God judged David because he was killing the enemies of Israel. Are we together at that level? So David was not judged. Hallelujah. Because he was killing the enemies of Israel. These were enemies of Israel. So there was no judgment on David. There was no judgment on David. But there was still a problem that he had great wars. Praise the Lord. Much as he was not judged, there was still a problem that David had much great wars. Now the Bible says, um, Behold a son, he says, shall be born to thee, who shall be a man of rest. Somebody underline rest. And the Bible says, And I will give him rest from all his enemies around about, for his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Underline it, forever. Somebody say amen. amen. The man of rest. The man of rest. And the Bible says that I will give him rest over his enemies. Are you hearing me? He says, I will give him rest. From all his enemies round about. And this is beautiful. And I'm going to come back to that. God gives peace and quietness to Israel in the days of Solomon. In other words, and, quit, uh, peace and quietness were not the portion of Israel during that time. But because Solomon was there. Peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. In his days. There was no guarantee for the days after him. But there was a guarantee for the days when he was there. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen again. Now, let me start this way. There was um, a gentleman. I, somebody sent me a small little clip from Facebook. Of course, I'm not on Facebook. It has too much English. <laughs> Praise God. I, I, I don't have the English of Facebook. But somebody picked something from Facebook. And... There's a preacher who, don't worry, I'm not mention the name because we walk in love and we don't do that as ministers of the gospel. Are we together? Now, there was a preacher who sent a small little picture or clip. No, a small little picture. And in that picture, there were two pictures in the one picture. Do you understand? He was collaged, so to speak. Now, in the upper picture, there was a huge auditorium full of people. Right? Then in the lower picture, there was an audit a church, a, 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 a preferably normal-sized room, and there were like 20 chairs. And then up on the picture, the guy put, when you preach what they want to hear, then he showed the people. <laughs> <laughs> then down, he wrote, when you preach the truth. When you preach what people don't want to hear. You hearing me? His mind was this. That when you preach people, things people want to hear which are not truth, people flood the meeting. And when you preach things that people are, 
<coughs> don't want to hear because they are too true. They walk out of the meeting. I said, wow. Are you hearing me? And it's not the first time I had somebody say something like that. So why don't we then translate that again in business? Why don't we translate that in any other aspect of life? I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. So if you go to business and then you say successful businessman, who is he? A thief. Right? If you see a man whose business is a bit slower than usual, you say, ah, this guy is faithful. You see how they think. If you have a successful family, ah, you probably do witchcraft. If your family is not successful, aha, uh-huh, those are the true trials of the Christian faith. <laughs> are you hearing me? If they don't see signs, miracles, and wonders, that is church. If they see signs, miracles, and wonders, ah, cult. There's a cult. That's a cult. I don't believe in it. How can something just disappear? Ah, ah, that woman must have been paid. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me show you some Acts. Acts chapter 16 verse 5. I'm coming from somewhere and I'm going to go somewhere. He saw the Bible says, And so were the churches established in the faith, and what? Reduced in number. Daily. <laughs> Love of the devil. <laughs> the Bible says, And so were the churches established in the faith, and the Bible says, And what? Increased in number daily. 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 When I saw that, I said, Makura, those are the things I love to use in my personal devotion. They are not things I'm supposed to be putting on a funeral pulpit. But, but I had to share them. Hallelujah. I increase daily. Tell your neighbor, I increase daily. My business increases daily. My career increases daily. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says they increased daily. They increased daily. They increased daily. So you want to tell me that the blessing of God is not supposed to increase a man? You want to tell me that everybody who is rich is a thief? You want to tell me that every multiplication there is in the body of Christ, therefore people are hearing what they want to hear, not truth? Hey, come on, look at what truth does. The Bible says they were established in the faith, and the Bible says, and they increased in number daily. In number daily. Daily we increase. Every day people submit to this ministry. I mean every day. That's the truth. It's not a statement of faith. It's the truth. Hallelujah. Because you see, many people don't see it's not in established in faith. It's established in the faith. There's a difference. Establishing a man in faith is different from establishing a man in the faith. Faith adds. In the faith multiplies. Do you understand what I'm saying? So they are faith truths. They are in faith truths. In the faith truths. They are truths that are for faith. They are truths that are for the faith. For example, if the Bible says that when the disciples come to Jesus Christ and they tell him, increase our faith. Huh? And then Jesus tells them that if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, he says you shall speak to this mountain or this tree. Be thou removed and be thrown in yonder place. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, and it shall be done. Do you understand what I'm saying? You speak be plucked out of here and be thrown in the sea. The Bible is clear. It shall be done. Are you following me, child of God? That's a, a truth establishing a man in faith. Now, there's something beautiful I want you to notice there. And one day I'll preach about it. You see, when the Bible says it should obey, 
each should obey. The Bible says, be, he says, and the Lord said, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, and you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey. There is some called, it should obey. I have a teaching there. Holy Spirit, remind me one day. Some people don't understand the obedience of things below us. Did you understand what I'm saying? It should obey. If you study the Hebrew word there for obey, it, the Greek word there, it borrows more the word of wishing. For it itself wishing. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. See, we don't just speak to things and they do. They also wish they do. Because every time they come in light with a child of God, creation grants for your manifestation. When you tell it, lift and be thrown in the other sea, the trees like, I am Andokosha. <laughs> My friends have stayed in the forest. Man, they call ya. You understand what I'm saying? But there's something there I'll share one day. It's beautiful. Everything in this world, even though it looks immovable and dead, it's alive. There is nothing in the metaphysical world that is dead. You are the one who has definitions of living and non-living things. There is a place in the spirit realm where everything is living. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is a place. The only problem is that many people are subjected to their definition of life. And so according to life, oxygen carbon dioxide, they're not alive. But there's another life in which they are alive. Are you hearing me? And they carry a mind to obey. Are we together? Do you understand? So, if, if, if I was preaching from that dispensation, I'll be talking about faith. That, those are faith truths. Anybody can preach that. But not everybody understands the in-faith truths. In the faith truths. Sorry. The faith. In the faith truths. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible says the churches were established in the faith. Not just in faith. They were not established because miracles were happening. Miracles were part of the experience. But they were not the true reason why the church is established. It, don't think that because you can open a blind eye, therefore you'll multiply do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't think because you are a, a smart brain, therefore your business is necessarily going to be a success. Because you know the basic principles of finances. They are faith truths. They are faith truths and they are in the faith truths. The churches were established in the faith. That's what the Bible says. And increase the number daily. It's not just a faith to raise a dead man. It's the faith. The doctrine. The true teaching of the doctrine of Christ. That is how you know that you'll increase. If you're a businessman, you must understand the doctrine. That's why he says they will know of me if they know my doctrine. The beginning of knowing the person of God goes deeper into a place of doctrine. The problem is that today, doctrine has been substituted with religion. Many people are religious and they appear to be doctrinally upright. Are you hearing me? Are we together? Let me share something. You see, many of us read the Bible, right? Come on, scripture. The Bible says that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Right? Is that true? That is true. He says the gospel is, not, is the power of God unto salvation. That is what the gospel is. The power of God unto salvation. It's not just the power of God. It's the power of God unto salvation. Do you understand? The gospel is not complete if there is power, but that power cannot save. Do you understand what I'm saying? He says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Unto salvation. Unto salvation. Salvation must come. I, I, I have to be healed, yes, but I need salvation. God is more interested, right? Even though He takes pleasure in my healing, 
He takes more pleasure in my establishment in truth. That is why the Bible says, He willeth that all men come to the knowledge of the truth. All men. He says, He wills that no man perish. No man perish. But that they might all come unto the knowledge of the truth. He wills that all men be saved, wonderful, healed, delivered, coma, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. You don't just, you see, there are people who are still in the dimension of I need healing. And healing comes and that's it. Then they go out of church. Then they wait for another day when they are falling sick. Then they fall sick again, then they come back again. They are always in the salvation dimension. Saved. But they are not in the knowledge places. Do you understand what I'm saying? They go hoping place to place, hoping place to place. I need an answer. Then they get an answer. And then they come out of the praise of God. Then tomorrow again they come. I need an answer. I need an answer. Oh, then they come out of the praise of God when they get the answer. And then they disappear for about a week or two. Then they come back again. I need an answer. I need an answer. Then they get an answer again and they disappear again to the praise of God for another month or two. They say, I need an answer. I need. A... So they're always living that life. Of, oh, if I get an answer, I'm out of the praise. Praise us. If I have problems, I'm going to come in the praise. So why are you seeking God? You're seeking God for salvation. Salvation is wonderful, right? It's beautiful. But you see, that salvation wants to extend to knowledge. The power just doesn't want to demonstrate itself on you and not save you to the uttermost. So in other words, salvation is not just the power for you to be healed. It also seeks a place for you to know. That is why he wills that all men be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. All men. All men. But you don't just have healing. You don't have money. You're not just wealthy. No. When they make you open the Bible, you can shock their brains out. Somebody said they're talking about me. Tell your neighbor. They're talking about me right there. Hallelujah. And that is the balance of the spirit. Because you see, some people only know him. Okay, let's go back to where we're reading. Some people only know him in one place of understanding. He says, for, no, 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 back to, story, to, to the experience. He says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and to also the Greek. Now, <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 1, I need to show you something. First Corinthians chapter 1, I need to show you something. Verse 17. He says, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. He says, but for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto them which are saved, it is the power of God. Wonderful. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And the Bible says, where is the, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? No, sorry, has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew him not. Now, this is very interesting. The world by wisdom knew him not. Men became too wise and failed to know God. Do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, there was a certain wisdom that can come amid these people, and that wisdom draws a man away from God. That is why there is a portion of Scripture in the book of Proverbs that says, My son... He says, seize from instruction that causes men to err from true knowledge. That means that there are the instructions that cause men to err from true knowledge. They also come as instruction. They also come as knowledge. Seize not, my son, to hear the instruction that causes to err from the words of knowledge. Right? Now, let's go back to the issue I wanted to show you there in Corinthians. Now, he says that the world knew him not. Because of wisdom. There is a certain wisdom that they received. And out of that wisdom they, they failed to know God. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says. For after that in the wisdom of God. The world by wisdom knew he not. It pleased God by the foolishness of the preaching. To save them that believe. Now the Bible says for the Jews. Now I'm going to come back why. Why salvation comes first to the Jew and then to, to the Greek. He says for the Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. That means that if you find a man who is Jew to tell him that God exists, they want to first see a miracle. Mm -hmm, show me. God is alive. Okay, show me. Raise a dead guy. You raise him. Okay, now I believe in your God. If you find a Greek fellow, he, he wants to first understand God through wisdom. Then you make sense later in the miracles. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, the Jew and Greek is a distinction of spirit at work in men. There are people who believe by seeing signs, miracles, and wonders. And there are people, when they reconcile knowledge, they, they can affirm and say, this is God. I see what I'm saying. Now, let's go back. The gospel of God is the power of God unto salvation. Right? To the Jew first. And also to the Greek. Did you hear what I just said? To the Jew first. And also to the Greek. In other words, when you are done with the Jew, you go to? Because the Greek will still have questions. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Are you, are you with me? To the Jew first and now the Greek. That is why the Bible says that the gospel of Christ is the power and wisdom. Power and wisdom is the gospel. Not only power. Do you understand what I'm saying? Many people actually think it's only power. No. Power and wisdom. Those two are the things that bring the understanding and the revelation of what salvation is. Salvation is not complete if it has a power without wisdom. And it's not complete either if it has a wisdom without power. Hallelujah. For then where is the reconciliation of the power demonstrated if it carries not the wisdom? Are you hearing me? Thank you. He says, for unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, right? Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Tell anybody, Christ is the power and the wisdom. Christ. Say it with enough gusto. Say, Christ is the power Christ. of God and the wisdom of God. Tell anybody, and I have both. <laughs> hey, uh, praise God. And I have both. I have both. I have both. You cannot live in a place where you seek a reconciliation of saying that I am believing God for a power that cannot equal to the knowledge. And neither should you ever be in a place where you seek God for a knowledge and wisdom that cannot reconcile with the anointing on your life. Balance both. That's the gospel. Tell anybody that's the gospel. That's why he speaks of the fivefold ministry. Pastors, prophets, teachers, evangelists, all this. They are all doing one thing. Perfecting the saints for the work of ministry to the edification of the body. Until we all reach the full measure, the full stage of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And to a perfect man. And he says them that we might not be babes. Tossed to and fro by all waves of doctrine. All waves of doctrine. The wind of doctrine. And by the slate of men. Cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. That's why we have the fivefold ministry. To perfect saints for the work of ministry to the edification of the body. And each of those offices has a place of perfection. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You see, I tell people that because we come from an African perspective, we think like traditional African men and women. Witchcraft. Now, which is okay. We cast out witchcraft every day. But you see, people want to stay in a power without wisdom. I don't know if they understand what I'm saying. Just pray for me, apostle. You pray for them. Okay, I'm good. They go away. You see, you don't understand this. God is more interested. He's interested in getting you to a certain level in the spirit than just healing you. Healing is wonderful. But you see, without knowledge, you're dying another way. You're dying another way. You're dying another way. There is a price to truth. That's why he says, buy truth and sell it not. Also wisdom. There's a price to truth. There's a, pi a price to truth. We don't give it by money, but we buy it. You know, it's pay every price to receive truth, but sell it not. Are you hearing me? He says, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. I tell people eternity is worth investing in and there is no investment of this life until you learn to invest in truth. Christians don't even read Bibles. They read for them their Bibles. Or they like the part which can get them out of debt. And that's alright. They like the part which can get them out of singlehood. Which is okay. But more than that, whether you're single or you're indebted, Christ is 
the power and the wisdom. Reconcile both. Reconcile both. That is why we teach and demonstrate. We teach and demonstrate. We teach and so we say, okay, if you want power, the power is available. But most importantly, receive wisdom. Receive wisdom. Receive wisdom. Because there are many things that don't, I tell people, there are many things that don't need prayer. Because they, don't, they are not solved in the prayer realm. They are in the knowledge realm. Now, even if you pray forever, you're going to waste time for nothing. You remember Daniel? Daniel goes before God. 21 days, the answer has failed. And then he goes before God. And he says, what is wrong? Why has the answer failed? And the angel tells him, look. From the day you set your heart to fear God and understand him, the answer was sent. But why was he inquiring? Because he didn't know. He did not know. Now, New Testament dispensation creatures cannot be like Daniel. Because this was a man who was entirely relying on the spirit upon him. Not the spirit operating in him. He said now we have an unction from on high. He said we know all things. But how come I, how come I don't know? Yes, it's because, you see, the grace for everything in this life begins with the understanding of the mystery of faith. Not just faith as a doctrine, but faith as a mystery. Because I'll give you an example. Righteousness is our very standing and key for accessing the things of the Spirit. Do you agree? Righteousness is the rightness of God. That even if I do something that seems wrong to you, it might be right by God, if I can back it by truth. Are you seeing what I'm saying? If the truth allows it. That's righteousness. is by faith. But the Bible says, calls it the faith of Jesus. That's when a man starts to walk in God. So I say, I want to walk in God. There is no prayer for you to walk in God. It's not, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Paul says that I may be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness which is of God by the faith of Jesus Christ. He didn't say by the faith in Jesus. No, but by the faith of the Son of God. Read it. He says, uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm looking for the Philippians. Whatsoever things were gained to me, those have counted lost for the excellent knowledge of Christ, for whom I count all things but done that I may win Christ. He says, yes, thank you. Philippians 3, 9. He says, and be found in him, look at this, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of. I love the way the KJV said it. It's through the faith of Christ. Not the faith in Christ. Of Christ. The righteousness, which is of God, by faith. That means that when I receive righteousness by faith, I receive the righteousness of God. And from that day on, I start to function by the faith of Christ. I do everything because I'm not a, just a believer, but Christ in me believes. So my ultimate faith is faith in Christ for Christ to function in me by his faith. Oh, oh, oh. oh I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. My faith in Christ is to allow him to function in me by his faith. So my faith ceases when I believe on Christ. After that, his faith takes over. That's called righteousness. See, the reason why many of you don't receive results is, even when you receive Christ, you carry on with your own faith. You're not functioning by the faith of Christ. So at the end, it's your works. It's not his works. If he's the author and the finisher of your faith, he that began a good work in you shall see to accomplishment from the day of Christ. The day you believed him and he resided inside you, from that day you stopped believing. He now believes through you. Your primary place of a believer is a believer in Christ. That's why Paul tells you, I sought to know nothing, save cancers. And that's how you know. Save Christ dead and resurrected. Because the moment I know this Christ and behold like in a mirror, there's a transaction that takes place, a metamorphosis if you like. The one that says you will change. You'll metamorphose. Metamorphose means you leave one stage into another stage of maturity. You don't just get a job. That's not metamorphosis. A car is not metamorphosis. Because you can still have a car and stay in the same stage. That's why I tell people, it's one thing to go high, it's another to go above. I shared that yesterday. Some people go high, but they don't go above. 
if I throw this ball, I can throw it and it goes as high as this roof. But if I throw it outside, they can say the ball went above the roof. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the man says, you're sitting in Christ far above <laughs> all principalities and powers. You're not even in the same arena with them anymore. Somebody say amen. amen. So we are transformed. We are metamorphosed. We are changed. We are transfigured constantly. And he says, while we continue to behold in the word of God. Continue to behold in the word of God. Not while they continue praying for us. Go. Devil, go. Go. No. He says, while we continue to behold in the word of God. As in a mirror, the glory of God. Somebody say amen. amen. So as you're, com- as right now as you're listening. There is a transfiguration taking place in your spirit. Right now as you're listening to the word, there is a metamorphosis. You're coming out of one stage of cross into another stage of cross. Somebody say, even as by the spirit is working in me. Hey, uh! The power and the wisdom. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why you must love the word. That's why you must love the word. The true word. You must love the true word. You must buy it. You must pay a price for it. Because it is spirit and it is life. Now when a man is found in God, he no longer believes. No. His primary place of believing ends on Christ in him. The rest of the story is the faith of the son. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Wow. That means if I start walking right now and do anything spiritually, it is God. It is no longer I. See, Paul got into that place and I I need to show you the deepest measure of the presence of God. Paul got to a level... Where he said, it's a small thing for you to judge me, for I know nothing of myself. You could not judge Paul. Because when he looked at himself, he said, there's nothing about me. How can I be judged if I know nothing of myself? He said, it's a small thing that I should be judged by you over man's judgment. Yeah, judgment, not my own self. Do you understand? Judge I, not myself. He says, for I know nothing of myself. So if you don't know anything about yourself, how, how can you be judged? At what level do you judge a man who is dead yet he liveth, yet not him, but Christ liveth in him? And he says, and the life that I now live, again he added, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Oh, I wish you get this. You will not pray for a sick man saying, ah, will it work? Jesus didn't think that way. It's not in his mind to think that he can fail. Do you understand? That is why everything I'm trying to dispel even while we preach this gospel in these days is to make you understand that failure is no longer an option. We never fail. I always win. Tell your neighbor, I always win. I always win. Hey! I win. I win every time. I win tomorrow. I win next week. I win next year. I win next next 10 years. The next 20 years, I'm a winner there. Because I always win. I always win. I always win. I always win. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. Thanks be to God who causes us to triumph. And he says, and he makes manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place. That means anybody who wants to know God, they look at me. Put up your name there. Everybody who wants to know God, they look at you and they say, my God, who is God if you have seen me? You have seen the Father? Hey! And I'm not sorry. Now, if he says, thanks be to God, which causes us I would say maybe sometimes. He says, thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph. Always. 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 Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Always. Always triumph. 
always. It doesn't matter what you think you're going through. It doesn't matter the report you got from the doctor. It doesn't matter what your brother said, what your mother said, what your uncle said, what the newspaper said, what the radio said, what they wrote on CNN or what is on television. He will always cause you to triumph. Always. Men who think that way always wait for victory. Always. Even this one. You're waiting for victory. Mandarakosi. Shirebala. Prosalandosi. Rakoteleba. It is too late to fail. Tell your neighbor it is too late to fail. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. I don't care what your boss told you. He's just flesh and blood boss. I don't care what the government says. They're just flesh and blood. He always causes me. Always causes me. Always causes me. Always causes me. That is why it is well with me. That is why I say it's well with me. It doesn't matter how things look like. I rest tell myself every day, it is well with me. It is well with me. It is well with me. It was well with me. It is well. Hallelujah. How does a man who expects victory every time look like? No, no, you show me. <laughs> How does he look like? People in the back, show me. That's it. Always full of joy. Unspeakable. Full of glory. I refuse to be unhappy. Because I know where it's ending. I know the end of things. So, Daniel says, ah, God, you, you know, you have an answer from on high. Now, the reason why I am saying this, I made that statement is, if you understand the rightness of spirit in faith, right? The unction that knoweth all things is not the unction that searches out to know. Because that's, that's, that's a slow spirit, that's a slow mind. See, the Bible says, who has known the mind of Christ that he should instruct him? Who has known the mind of Christ? And he says, but we have the mind of Christ. The Amplified says that we have, we hold his very thoughts and feelings and purposes. Now, there's a man saying, let me see what God is saying. Then there's another man who's saying, no, I know what he's saying. I know what he's saying. I know what he's saying in me. I know where this is going. The word has told me how. I have the mind. I hold his very thoughts, his feelings and purposes. I hold his feelings and purposes. So it's, it's not when Christ purposes you purpose. No, no. As he is purposing, so are you. As he is thinking, so are you. As he is feeling, so are you. As he is planning, so are you. He says, herein is love made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of what? Judgment. He says, because as he is, so are we. Oh! Then you see a Christian seeking the mind of Christ. Is he my wife? Is he my husband? No, he's not my husband. God, if she's my husband, let him put on blue. If he's not my husband, let him put on purple. If she's my wife, let her put on purple. If she's not my wife, let her put on yellow. Mama! You... <laughs> Show me, Lord, if this is my job. Talk to me. Oh. You have not understood righteousness by faith. How can you not know if it's your job or it's not? You have to know. No. Ask everybody who is married. Pastor Stephen, you can, you can bear witness. If they ask you one question, 
How did you know? She was the one. You just say, I just knew. Inside there. Somebody is waiting for yellow. But for you inside, when I should put some blue, when she, oh! I know! I know! I know where my ministry is going. I know. That's why I tell people 5,000 watts. This, we've not yet started. No, I told people we've not yet started. Because I know when we start. I know when we start. I know how we will look like when we start. It's a knowledge. It's inside there. I have that mind in my spirit. That's why you don't waste jobs applying in the wrong places. I've thrown three CVs, Apostle. It's five. I don't know which one. No. Why do you even waste paper, time and money? Even the HR's time. No. Wait for your real one. Which you don't ever say no. This one. This particular one. It's mine. There are things I let pass. Personally, there are things I let pass. Because I'm not a lasting anymore. I'm past last. I went to the end of all things. The communication of those things introduced me to a word which is broader. And when that word which is broader is met, there's a satisfaction you receive. You can never last for the things of, God, of the world anymore. You can never last. He says, I've seen the end of all perfection. I saw it. God cannot kill last in a man's spirit until he makes you walk certain places. I walked certain places and from the day I came there, I never lasted again. There's nothing I look at and I admire. There's nothing in this world I look at and I admire. Oh, it doesn't mean I don't like nice stuff. <laughs> I don't last for them any. It doesn't mean they don't come to me. All things are mine. But I am delivered from those things. Paul says, for I shall not be brought under the power of those things. I can't drive an expensive car and stop talking to someone. Because the car doesn't make me. No. I don't need 25 bodyguards. I got God. 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 God. One time a guy came to me. He was from Ginger. He told me I I, I came to shoot you. I had wanted to shoot you. Confess to me. I had wanted to shoot you. He came in the meeting at the MTN Arena. Power hit him. Now he's preaching the gospel in Ginger. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I know who I am. 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 Right now, you're being metamorphosed. <laughs> you're being metamorphosed. The big metamorphosis. Hallelujah. Increasingly. So that is why I tell people, go to the end of all things. Because you see, the responsibility of the church is not to even... You see, he tells you that when you grow in this love of the Father, it, it is reconciled in knowledge and judgment. And the Bible says, and thus you examine the things that are most excellent. That you might not have offense on the day of Christ. Because there is offense when we are believing to understand things we are supposed to be examining. It's not right for a son of God to seek understanding of the things he ought to be understanding and examining. I wish you understand what I'm saying. Give me the amplified of that. He says, and this I pray that your love may... Uh-huh, Abound yet more and more and extend to its fullest development in the knowledge and all keen insight that your love may display its greater depth of acquaintance and more comprehensive discernment. Praise the Lord. So that you may surely learn to sense what is vital, approve and praise what is excellent and of real value, recognizing the highest and the best and distinguishing the moral differences that you may be untainted and pure and unerring and blameless. Because there is blame on people who cannot understand. You see, there are, there are things that are excellent in the spirit. And there are things that appear to be excellent to men. 
by the standards of how some men understand them. But there are things in God that are truly excellent. That's why Paul says, for all things are permissible, but not all things are beneficial. See, he says that all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. That's how the KJV says it. All of them are permissible, but they are not expedient. In other words, see, as a man of the Spirit, there is a time where you reach and realize there are things you can access, but they are not important. But they are there, but they are not important for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? And there are things that are lawful for you to access by the law of the Spirit. It's like, I was sharing with somebody about the law of exchange. Do you know the law of exchange? In the spirit world, there's something called the law of exchange. It's called the law of exchange. Right? Let me give you an example. Um, when Jesus walked this earth, the Son of God, who possessed all things, there are things he could have gotten if he wanted. Because all things were his. Do you understand what I'm saying? But even he, the Son of God, needed to wax strong in wisdom. Do you understand? Even the Son of God needed to wax strong in wisdom. The boy grew and waxed in strength and in wisdom. He grew in wisdom and stature. He increased in wisdom and stature. Son of God, 100%. But God says, no, he has to grow in wisdom. There are things Christ had access to. But you see, they were not relating to the mandate then, which was the kingdom. Do you understand what I'm saying? The Greek word for kingdom is realm. This guy wanted to introduce a realm. When a man is seeking for the introduction of a realm, it's different from a man who is just seeking basic things. I don't know if I'm making sense. He was bringing the kingdom of God on earth. That was bigger. So there are things the spirit of Christ could not entangle on, even in the place when the law of exchange was there enough for him to access all things. It says, all the things are given me by my Father which is in heaven. Christ had everything. But you see, when Paul says, I shall not be brought under the power of any, he knows that until God takes you to the end of all perfection, you can't tell the difference. You can't tell the difference. It's not something you put in yourself. It is something that happens the moment you get to the end of all perfection and see a commandment exceeding broader. That's the man who is thrown betwixt as of to be in the flesh for men not to go and be with the Lord. Because he didn't know that should I be in the flesh or should I go be... Because it's too much for him. Are you hearing me? Am I making sense? There are things in the spirit... It's like when Isaiah says, come without money and buy. Right? Sons of God are not supposed to buy with money. Do you understand what I'm saying? It doesn't mean we don't use money as a medium. But even money in its own is not the reason why we buy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Money is not the reason why we buy. It's, it's the humility for the sons of men to understand, okay, it, let me give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. We're just giving them back what belongs them. But it's, it's not the reason why we buy. We don't buy. See, the, the, the coin that came out of the fish was not manufactured. By Caesar. That's what makes us dangerous. Because we can put things in an economy. That didn't exist before. Because the way we exchange is different from the way the world exchanges. If I get money, I'll buy this. If I get money. (laughs) Look at this one. And you have the mind of Christ. If you get money. If you get money, you will buy. If you get money, you will buy a car. Okay. Let me pray for you and you get money to buy a car. <laughs> Cars are not bought with money. <laughs> the, only... <laughs> the things of this world are not bought with money by the sons of God. Because you can't buy what you own.
you, you tell your neighbor you can't buy what you own. He says, for all things are yours. And your Christ, all things are yours. All things are yours. And your Christ, all things are yours. And your Christ. All things are yours and your Christ. When you understand that, you cannot be put under the power of money. You cannot be put under the power of money. Because it's not your master. You're its master. See, they want taxes. And this man is very confident. He told him, go in the fish, go in the lake. The first fish you catch, open its mouth and pay for you and me. Now if you're dealing with that kind of man. The days have come. When men are going to tell people, go in my bathtub, pick two million dollars, go and pay for land. <laughs> I know why some of you are not saying amen. <laughs> Without money. Without money. And it had to appear in the mouth. Because the man was of the law. He understood that law. It had to appear in the mouth of that fish. There was no way it could not appear. There was no way it could not appear. There was no way it could not appear. Now, why fish? Why not anything else? Why fish? You'll understand one day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I'm not under subjection. To the elements of this world. I'm above. Tell yourself I'm above. Tell yourself again I'm above. I'm above. I'm above. I'm above. Christ. The power. And the wisdom. Now. David. David wants to build God a temple. And God tells him. Uh uh. You're not going to build a temple. Your son shall come after thee. And he shall build what? A temple. And the Bible says David prepared everything. In fact, Solomon took over. By the time he took over, everything was availed. There was nothing he needed. Do you understand what I'm saying? There was nothing he needed. And the Bible tells us that Solomon was charged to build a house for the Lord of the God of Israel. He was charged. Right? And God tells him, look, to build this church, this temple, this business, this marriage, this career, this, put anything. He says, this guy must be, firstly must be a man of rest. I'm just giving you an example, now we're in wisdom. He must be a man of rest. He says, and I will give him rest from all his enemies. Rest from all his enemies. Round about, for his name shall be Solomon. And I will give him peace and quiet unto Israel. In his days. This is, this is God telling you. Look. If there are certain things I cannot manufacture in pressure. This is the mind of wisdom. That is why as a man of God. You realize people who put me on pressure to pray. Apostle. Pray, 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 pray. I say okay I'm going to pray. Cool. I hang up. I say I'm not going to pray. Because I'm a man of rest. I don't know how to pray. In pressure. Tell your neighbor, I don't know how to pray in pressure. I don't know how to. Because every ounce of pressure represents fear. Are you hearing me? I say, oh, it's bad. Apostle, it's bad. Three minutes to go. Oh, it's dying. I say, okay. When you hang up, I'll pray. I just put down the phone. And I say, God, give her peace. She needs peace. You remember when he finds the disciples worried that they are going to beat them? He appears to them. First thing he says, peace. Outside, the, <laughs> the fire is out. But he says, no, 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 no. The issue is not what is outside. The issue is what is inside you. Find peace. That's a level of obedience. When I see a man out of stress, in stress, I know this is a dis- disobedient fella. Romans says, for your obedience has come abroad unto all men. And he says, I'd rather have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning 
Have a summary of the Bible. Romans 16, verse 19. Read it. Romans 16, verse 19. It says, For your obedience is come abroad unto all. Read. Uh-huh. Continue. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Did you hear that? For your obedience is come abroad all men. And he says, I'm glad therefore on your behalf that, that I would have you wise unto that which is good. When I, I want to put wisdom, I want to put wisdom in men concerning that which is good and very little concerning evil. Very little. Simple concerning evil. Today, what are the churches teaching? Evil. Generational curses. Gener- your cousin's uncle, the spirit of your uncle. The, the, people know they are sending fire. They are calling rain by force. They are breaking. They are going up. They are screaming. Every time they are telling them about another demon. Every day they are learning a new demon. Every day they are learning a new demon. Every day they are learning a new demon. Every week they are learning a new demon. Now they are breaking. They are going into another fast of breaking other things. This one, this kind cannot go away except by prayer and fasting. But the word says of unbelief. So the issue is not the demon. The issue of the man is unbelief because Jesus was dealing with unbelief before but they are breaking things the things that held my family those things that held my uncle those things that came on my cousin's sister I break I break 2010 I break 11 I break I break their back causes a bit like this I break I break I break then it changes a bit and gets into another angle I break I break then even one leg twisted I break I break the violence they take it by force I break I pray, I would rather have you wise. And to that which is good. And very simple. Concerning evil. What does the next line say? And the gods of anxiety. Tell your neighbor he's called the God of peace. The Bible says, the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Hey! Shortly! Shortly. Shortly. Tell your neighbor, shortly. You won't believe God for deliverance for 20 years. No. Shortly. God of peace. God of peace. God of peace. God of peace. The God of peace. He is the God of peace. Find your peace. That is why when I'm in a situation and I lose peace, I don't fix the situation first. I find my peace first. Isaiah 32, verse 17. One, two, three, let's go. And the work of? And the work of? What does it be? Uh huh. Shall have what? That's the work of a righteous man. When you're a righteous man, you have peace. Even if they fire you at your job, you have peace. Even if they chuck you, you have peace. Peace. That's the work of righteousness. When righteousness is on your spirit, you have peace. When peace like a river attend my way. He didn't say if peace. When souls like so. Apostle, it is so bad. It is so bad. It is so, so bad. (laughs) The devil is a liar. (laughs) Isaiah 54 verse 10. What does it say? I'll probably read that for the last because of time. I had a lot to share, but um, I will. One, two, three, let's go. For the mountains will what? Uh-huh. 
But my kindness shall not depart from you. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. God cannot... He, he can't break the covenant of peace on your life. Jeremiah 33 verse 6. You asked for more. Okay, this is the last. Behold, he says, I'll bring it health uh-huh, and cure. And I will cure them. And I will reveal unto them the abundance of what? Peace and truth. Where abundance and truth is, there is healing. There is a cure. There is an answer for every problem that you have. Find peace. Tell your neighbor, find peace. Find peace. And the God of peace, the Bible says, you shall what? You shall bruise seven children. That means, the reason why situations in your life delay to go is because you don't have peace. Wisdom. The gospel is wisdom. The gospel is wisdom. Come on, clap for Jesus. The Bible says that they know not the way of peace. What happens to men which know not the way of peace? They fail in anguish. And they are destroyed because the way of peace is not revealed to them. They know not the way of peace. They don't understand that the God of peace guards them. He's with them. That is the way of peace they know not. But now I know it. Do you know how much peace Jesus has in spite of what you're going through? Do you know why lightning doesn't strike? Because the doctor gave you a report. Because Jesus knows the end of your story. He knows the end of your story. You will finish well. You will finish well. Let this peace guard your heart and mind. You're going to be surprised the things that are going to happen in your life. Every other day you will wake up with peace. You will wake up into signs, miracles and wonders. Hallelujah. The Bible says they've made them crooked paths. Things that were supposed to come so straight, they're taking crooked ages. Because they understand no judgment, neither the way of peace. The things that are supposed to be coming shortly... Because shortcuts are usually more straighter than have peace. Tell your neighbor, have peace. These are the things that keep saints. These are the things that separate you from people who struggle. Yes, there are Christians who struggle, but I'm not among them which struggle. I have peace. Regardless of anything that happens in my life, I have taught myself to be at peace. Because I know what the God of peace can do. Shortly, I'll be smiling again. Hallelujah. He, God, even with all his victories, even with the zeal that David had, God could not give him a temple. Because he knew a man without a peaceful spirit will not build me a sanctuary. War will come to that house. He says, when the man who comes after you shall come, firstly, I'll give him rest. And I'll give him rest from all his enemies round about. And I will give peace and quietness unto Israel all his days. The moment I can do that, I can build a temple. I can build a ministry. I can build a marriage. I can build a career. I can build anything. If the man can rest and have peace. You're, you're, you're full of war, David. You're after my heart, but you're full of war. Everything for you is war. Greatness is not so easily provoked. When you know what's inside you, even if somebody says nonsense about you, you keep on walking strong, knowing very well that the seed of greatness is not easily provoked by circumstances. It's not easily provoked by the words of men. It's not easily provoked by the thoughts of individuals. Why? Because what is inside you is greater 
than he which is in the world. I have greatness inside me. I'm not easily provoked. I'm a man of rest and peace. And I shall enjoy peace and quiet all my days. That is how I intend to build my ministry. How do you intend to build yours? How do you intend to build your, your, your marriage? How do you intend to build your family? How do you intend to build your business? How do you intend to build your career? How do you intend to build? How do you intend to build? Me, I will build with peace. Regardless of what happens, I am peaceful. Now I want you to open your mouth and lambano these things. Hit them up, receive them in your spirit. Hey, Arando Sik. Braku Satalama. So Satan should buy. Speak another time. So try. I always should come. Let this place the assurance control.
The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.